we're about to start module one. Amy, if you're there, give me a green thumbs up. Great. Now, Amy, can you hear me? Go ahead and say something if you can hear me. I can hear you just fine. Outstanding. So we're going to start module one. And if you have any questions, just don't hesitate. Go ahead and chime in. So we're going to take our introduction to Microsoft SQL Server 2014 and we'll be looking at some of these basic architectures, how to get things going, how to get it started. We're going to go over what a relational database is. We're going to look at some of the sample databases, look at what a client server database is. And finally, we're going to have some of that great fun in actually writing a query. Now we're going to talk about queries. If we're going to ask SQL to do something or tell it to do something, we're going to use a set based language. This includes scripts and batches as well. But as we look at SQL, we'll first see that there are multiple versions, additions, there's, there's even a cloud edition. And so per this slide, the versions that we have are 1.0 all the way back to 1989 to 2014. Uh, Amy, go ahead. Do you have a question? Are these all the versions? Amy, believe it or not, they've got a new version that's coming out on the horizon. It's going to be 2016. So as soon as you think you've got it all nailed down, I'll be doggone if they don't come out with something else. But it makes for great learning. So we've got multiple editions as well. Now we're going to start SQL Server Management Studio. This is where we actually begin to write the queries and manage and manipulate SQL Server. There are going to be some other things that we do, but let's start out by looking at SQL Server Management Studio. So Amy, what I want you to do, I want you to make sure that you can access your lab on demand. Amy, give me a green check, a thumbs up, if you've got access to your lab on demand. Outstanding, outstanding. And now I want you to, in SQL Server Management Studio, I want you to point to Databases, right-click Databases, and then we're going to come to Refresh. So you're going to right-click Databases, and then if you'll follow the red squiggly, you're then going to choose Refresh. And now we should have a database called T-Squill. Amy, do you have that database? All right, Amy, now that we've got our T-School database, we're now going to execute a query. And what we want to do is we want to return all of the records from the employees table. I know there's an employees table because if I click the plus sign beside the T-School database and then click the plus sign beside tables, it says HR employees. So we're going to type use TSQL go select all that's what the asterisk means from HR dot employees and then finally type go at the end now I'm going to blow that up to make sure you can see it and we're going to execute it by clicking the execute button and as you'll see we now have a result set returned and we did that by clicking on the execute button Yes, go ahead. Is this the only way to execute a query? We've got multiple ways to do it. We could highlight it, right click the highlight and then come to execute. We could press F5 to execute. We even have a key combination called Alt X. So we could hold the Alt key down and press the letter X to execute. Try one of those alternate ways. Amy? I'm actually remotely looking at your lab on demand right now. And it appears that you may have misspelled employees. If you could just go back in and remove one of the S's. Now what I want you to do, I want you to execute it again. You can click execute in the main menu. has the red exclamation point. And Shazam! it looks like it's working. Now I'm going to take over and show you how we could actually request a single column if we want it. We'll just go ahead and request two. 
So I typed in last name, first name for you, but I want you to go ahead and execute it. So click execute, if you will. And notice it only returns last name, first name. We're going to continue looking at